Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. I'm here today to talk to you guys about one of your many opportunities that you have available to you for high school. One thing to know is that Connecticut is one of the only states that has choice schools for you to choose to where you're going to go for high school. So today I'm just going to talk to you for like 15 minutes about opportunities that are available to you at Ledger High School. Ledger High School is one of the 19 regional agri-science centers here in the state of Connecticut, which means every student in the state of Connecticut has an opportunity to attend one of the regional agri-science centers. And being East Line students, your opportunity is to attend the agri-science center in Ledger. So the first thing I'd like to do is show you a brief video of the opportunities that you would have available at Ledger High School. Because what would happen is if you came to the Ledger Diver Science program, you would become a Ledger Colonel. And what that means is you would take all of your academic classes at our high school in addition to being enrolled in the Agri Science program. And that means you will have the opportunity to participate in our athletic events, our music and our program, and all of our extracurricular activities.
The third circle is the FFA, and that's a leadership organization that's only open to students enrolled in an agro science program. It is a national organization, and that is where we're building you to be a leader, whether that's going to be a leader in our school, in your community, potentially within our state, nationally or internationally. So lots of opportunities for you to learn a lot of content, for you to gain employability skills, and for you to develop your leadership skills. I'm going to show you a video of all of our course offerings that we have available to you. Everything you see in the video is what we have at school. So when you take a look at those animals, that is what our students are working with on a day-to-day -day basis. When you see the aquaculture tanks, you're going to see those production tanks that our students work with every day. All the agricultural mechanics and all the tools, and then our greenhouses, floral designs, and our gardens. In agricultural mechanics, we study how to use and maintain the structures, equipment, power systems, and controls that go into keeping plants and animals healthy. We do a lot of different things, but in the end, it's always about the plants or animals. So in one class, we might be working on a coop for chickens or a fence for alpacas. In another, we might be fixing lawnmower engines, installing light switches or even welding. Aquaculture involves the growth, production, care, and harvesting of aquatic crops such as fish and shellfish. Students will work in a closed systems aquaculture lab designing, constructing, preparing, and carrying these recirculating systems in aquarium. Topics covered are recirculating system design, equipment repair and maintenance, physiology of aquatic organisms, fish and shellfish production, aquaponics, mariculture, water quality, methods of commercial fisheries, and aquaculture. We develop skills related to plant careers. We run the actual practice with how plants grow and how to grow plants. We have the opportunity to learn greenhouse management, landscape design, fertilization, pest control, vegetable and flower production, landscape maintenance, and floor design. We work in the lab, greenhouse, and in the school gardens.
records that you have that need to make their way to us. Within the application, your grades will need to be submitted, your behavior records, your recommendations from teachers, and you're going to be writing a letter stating why you want to enroll in the program. The one thing to keep in mind is we're only looking at completed applications when we go to schedule your interview. So you need to make sure your application is complete so that you can come for your interview. We're going to have our 8th grade open house Thursday, November 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. It is open to all of your families, so your younger siblings, older siblings are more than welcome to attend as well. You'll be able to take a tour around the facility. You're going to be able to see all the animals, all that equipment, all the fish tanks, and go through the greenhouse. You'll also be able to talk with our current students and teachers and ask any questions that you might have. We'll also have some of our current students' parents there who will be able to answer any of your parent or guardian questions as well. Do you guys have any questions? You've been a great audience. If you do find that you have questions after today, if you go on to our website, there's a whole bunch of tabs on there. One of them is for prospective students. You can click on that tab, and then there's going to be a lot of information on there, all of our athletic teams, our clubs and organizations, and then um, all the information about our school schedule. You have a question? Okay, so the question was, how are you going to get there? East Line will provide you with a bus. They will let you know where the pickup is going to be and what time, and then you would make sure you are at that location so they can pick you up. And then they'll meet you back at the high school at the end of the day, and then they'll take you to your drop-off location. Great question. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, thank
Um, we have all kinds of other places going on too. The Garden Art Center, uh, we have a student there right now. Uh, he's doing great, does a lot of theater work there two days a week. Kind of rushing here. Um, and all over the school district. So freshmen, I like to keep a little closer. This is a former student, um, Joe. Uh, he works at the uh, Flanders um, School. We have a few kids over at Flanders. Uh, one kid working on tech. Uh, one young lady working in the art room. Uh, this young man working in the kitchen. He wants to look into food service once he graduates. So, and most of our kids go to college. So it's, I did a little, uh, a little survey, about 70% of our students after the coastal will go to college, typically locally, uh, but it's still a college-bound track for kids. Um, a lot of kids can be into animals, so we have, uh, it's a Waterford um, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. I'll work with some of the pets over there. Um, a really cool spot is Forgotten Felines. Um, you have to be 18. Um, it's in Westbrook, but we want a lot of cat adoptions. We got another picture. Yep. Yeah. So one of our young ladies on the left, the Carelot Daycare. A really cool one we have is um, Q105. So the young man goes to events for Q105. Two days a week, it's located in New London. So he works with all their event planning. He really loves it. And a lot of times, the internships will hire our kids. So Carelot hires a lot of kids. Um, uh, Q105 hired this young man, and he's going to college at the same time. It was the uh, Three Rivers. The young lady on the right, that's Forgotten Felines. Um, that was able to open up the doors for a, um, a high-end uh, pet hospital in Middletown. They're very selective, so that opened up the doors for her. Now she's going to uh, Unity College in Maine, kind of focusing on this uh, area. Um, if you go to Coastal Connections, most of our kids take classes still at um, the high school. So music, any really cool classes you want to take, you kind of uh, provide transportation. So you're certainly not cut off from high school. We do sports, activities, we encourage all that. Um, we have a really good um, partnership with the Mystic Seaport. We do a team building activity uh, each year over there. And uh, once a month we work on internship experiences over at the Seaport. Uh, pictures. So uh, we have woodworking, cooking, um, metalworking, printing, and my favorite is uh, I do a lot of sea kayaking. I write books on climbing and kayaking. So we build a kayak over there each year. So last year, this is the one we built. So we have a, a we pick up a kit, we work with the people at the seaport, and then we kind of launch it in spring, have a fun launch party. And then we'll typically sell it to purchase another one for this year. So actually, one of the students' families this year wanted to purchase the kayak. So he's going to customize it, make it really cool, customize it for him. Uh, a lot of hands-on learning over at Coastal. So it's a, a lot of project-based learning, a lot of hands-on. I think that's a squid dissection on the right. Um, we also have a cool climate culture. We just kind of like to have fun. It's one of those places where kids and students want to be there. So there's a process too. So this is not ultimate ed. You know, ultimate ed in the old days was kids with kind of difficulty, difficulties with behavior or go to a certain place. Uh, there's an interview process. The parent family has to interview with me. The student comes over for three days for a shadow. Uh, at the end of the three day shadow, if uh, the coastal people and the families think it's a good fit, it's a good fit. If I feel to either behavior or attendance, attendance issues, it's just not a good fit, um, then the person's not accepted. So we're a little selective. We like to keep a really tight, positive, close family like over a coastal. Um, and that's about it. So if you'd like to find out more information about coastal, you can always contact one of your counselors. So we have the website off of East Line Schools. I'll be back in the spring, probably doing some Kiva presentations. But it's just a different option. East Lime High School is a great place. It's one of the best high schools literally in the United States. I think you guys will love it. But for some kids, they want just a kind of a different option. The postal is an option for them. Question? Yeah. Yes? How long have you Two minutes. We're located kind of close, so but it's really close. All right. I think that's about it. <laughs>
Norwich or Grasso? Probably a lot of you, right? Awesome. Well, thank you for having me today. I know you're going to hear a lot of presentations. Um, I ask, I'm actually a school counselor at Norwich Tech, so just like I would tell my students that are looking to go to college, uh, make sure you hear everything everybody has to say, keep an open mind, um, because maybe Eastline isn't the school for you. Maybe you are looking to go somewhere else. Um, Eastline is also a great school, of course, but there are, are a ton of options, certainly more than I had when I was your age in terms of selecting high school. Um, so, Norwich Tech, what makes us unique? So, all of the technical high schools, in addition to earning a high school diploma, which is important if you are a student that wants to go to college, of course, um, you also earn some time in a trade and technical experience. So, depending on the trade you choose, that may be a certification, licensure, um, whatever it might be, um, but you're earning both the same amount of time it would take a normal student to get a high school diploma. Okay, so it's really important um, that you know you work really hard with us. Uh, it is a really unique experience. How do we do that? So how do we do trade and academics all in the same amount of time as you normally would at Sadie's Line? Uh, we work in cycles, so it's it's really never boring at Norwich Tech. The first two weeks as a freshman, you're in academics, just like you are now. Seven periods a day, you start at 7:15 and you end at two. Um, the next two weeks, though, you're in trade and you're in that trade all day long, and I'll explain how you choose that trade in a minute. But it makes the year go by really fast. If you're a student that doesn't like to necessarily sit in the classroom all day, you like to work hands-on, uh, a technical high school might be a really great option for you. So it's really um, a good option to consider. So I'm not sure if you've heard from Grasso yet, but we do have some different choices from Grasso, so I want to make sure I highlight those. Um, at Norwich Tech, we have 12 different trade technology areas. You'll see them all listed here. Um, of course, we have all your traditional trades, so a lot of your construction trades, you know, carpentry, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, of course, automotive, you have culinary. If you want to be a hairdresser or a cosmetologist, you can do that with us. If you want to go um, into the health care field, um, we have an option called health technology as well. Um, ones that are specific to Norwich Tech that are a little bit different than your other choices. Uh, biotechnology is our brand new trade technology area. If you are a student who loves science, who loves doing their own research, uh, that is what the students are doing. It is a brand new trade, all state-of-the-art uh, facilities um, in, our, in our school building. The students are doing their own research on a, a multitude of different things. So our underclassmen last year were working on uh, things like cloning. So they were cloning Venus flytraps, adding bioluminescent um, Illuminescence, rather, into the you know, fly trap, which is really cool. Um, Upperclassmen are working on research of diseases and things like that. They do submit to the Connecticut Science Fair every year. So if you are a student, again, that is looking to go into college, this is a great college um, track for you. Another one that is specific to Norwich Tech, we have electrical engineering and applied electronics. Those students learn everything from how to fix the Chromebooks that all our students have. Um, they work on robots. They do all our audiovisual work and all our concerts and things like that. Um, they are very, very tech savvy students. Um, graphic communications is another one that's specific to us. So those students do everything from print media advertising, so business cards, posters, logos, things like that. They also do web-based media design. So if you're interested in graphic design, um, if it's going towards college for that, that is certainly something that many of our students will do. The last one that's specific to our respect is marketing management. So if you are a student that's interested in business, those students really starting in freshman year learn how to write business plans and actually carry out a business plan. Um, they run our school store, which we call the Emporium. Uh, it is not a typical high school store. It doesn't look like a normal store. We all know which type here. Um, it has whatever is in season. So the students select what they want to sell. They market that. Um, not only through normal marketing strategies, um, like window displays, but they also do social media marketing. Um, they also participate in something called NECA, which is an international organization where you can go compete um, all over the country um, against other business students, which is a really unique opportunity. So really, something for everyone. Our high school does not look, again, like a traditional high school. We have a full working restaurant on our campus, a full working bakery, a full working state-of-the-art salon, an automotive garage, a school store. So it really is a very unique learning environment. So how do you select from one of those 12 awesome trades? How do you choose at your age what you want to do? Um, again, we ask that you keep an open mind. Um, all of our freshman students go through a process called exploratory. 
So the first couple months of school, you go through the, with a group of about 20 students, and you try every single trade technology for two days. Um, I've had many students who have to say, you know, Ms. Pearson, I know I really want to be a plumber, or I know I really want to be a health technology student. But through the exploratory process, they might decide that something else is a better fit for them. So you go through every single trade. Um, pretty soon, our freshmen will go into phase two, uh, which is when they go back and pick their top three favorites. And they go for about four days a piece to all their favorite shops to really get a more in-depth look. At that time, students are really getting hands-on. So our automotive students are already working on brake jobs and oil changes at that point. Our culinary students are doing a bakery expo for all of the faculty. It's really fun for us, too. Uh, so you're really actually getting to understand really what the trade is all about. Because come December, we have a really fun night called Shop Selection Night. If you and your families are invited back to the school, you get to kind of check out the trades one last time. And at the end of that night, you pick your final trade that you'll be in until you graduate. Uh, a lot of students have said, well, like in college, you know, can I double major? Can I pick two trades? The answer is no. Um, when we graduate you from Norwich Tech, we're not only saying that you're ready to go off to college if that's your choice, we're also saying that you're ready to go off and work in that career field. So you're ready to go be a plumber, a uh, plumbing apprentice, or you're ready to go um, work as a CNA um, in a healthcare facility. So we're, we're needing to make sure that you have enough hours and practice that you have uh, the competencies to be able to go out and work if that's what you choose to do. Okay, so you try them all, but you end up selecting one that you'll graduate with. A little bit different than what you all have here. We do have, um, we don't really like to call them uniforms, but we do have certain academic apparel and trade apparel that you are required to wear if you are one of our students. Um, all of the academic here has an NT logo on it. Okay, so anything in academics from polos, you know, button-up shirts, vests, you know, there's a bunch of different options. There's also a lot of different options in terms of athletic gear that our students will wear or supporting a music program or whatever it might be. Um, there's lots of different options. We do a PE uniforms and things like that. When you select your final trade area, you will also be wearing a uniform of your trade. So for example, our health technology students wear scrubs to school when they're in trade. Um, our automotive students actually come in an automotive, you know, like a jumpsuit kind of thing. Um, you have to remember that our students are actually working when they come to school. So whether they're being sent out to work on a customer's home, they're working on a customer's car, um, they're doing a customer's nails in the salon, they're serving at the restaurant, you're actually running a business. So you're representing our school, um, and you're representing the organization that you're working for at the time. So the uniform is really important. It's the effort of the uniform. I talked to a bunch of freshmen about that that came from all different schools that didn't have uniforms. And they said they actually preferred it. It made it easier to kind of pick what you're going to wear during the day. There wasn't any you know, thought about it, just got up and got dressed and went to school. So the majority of students that come to a technical high school, the reason they do it is for the hands-on work, which we call our production. Okay? So we're never going to send you out um, to go build a house without teaching you how to do that first. So of course you have to sit in theory, and we do teach you how to do things. But then we do go up and send you out to do stuff. So these are just some examples and pictures of our students doing what we call production. So some carpentry students putting siding on the house, one of our plumbing students installing a plumbing unit, um, our marketing students working on one of their business plans, okay, you'll see some of our HVAC students working on a big HVAC unit, one of our automotive students in the automotive garage working on, it looks like she's doing something with a tire there, and then of course one of our hairdressing students in the salon. Um, so I'm going to flip through a couple more, but our students really get, do get to really do the hands-on work that you might come and learn in theory if you were in a regular high school. So you'll see some of our electrical students there installing electrical panels. One of our triple E students, that's the free electrical engineering and applied electronics stream. That's why we call them triple E, it's a mouthful. Um, but he's fixing a Chromebook. Um, you'll see uh, left, on the left is uh, one of our students in carpentry. That machine is called the CNC machine. Um, he's actually creating the work that is right on our campus. Um, and then of course the electrical students working on some more solar panels. Um, all of our construction trades really do learn about green technology, so whether it's geothermal or solar energy, um, they really do have a great understanding of that before they graduate from us. Uh, you'll see some of our graphic students with some of the really cool posters they made because like a kindness week at Norwich Tech, um, so they all made posters for that. And then they got to go over, I don't know if anybody knows Fast Science and Waterford, but they do a lot of the local um, advertisements and things like that. They got to go over and visit and see what he had to do. Um, 
to create those posters. Uh, a, a number of our students across trade areas do participate in science fair every year. So our biotechnology students, health technology students, and our AAA students all have the opportunity to do that. Um, they all submit to it every year. That it's a really great opportunity for them um, to have their work judged and to really actually have real lab work like most students want to have until they go to college. So it's a pretty cool opportunity for those students. Um, of course, I've talked a lot about trade. Academics is equally as important. We do graduate with more respect to the high school diploma. We do have honors curriculum across the board. Um, we do have opportunities for the college credit, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but we also have some academic electives. So if you're interested in continuing to take Spanish, or you want to take forensics, or psychology, or sociology, um, those are opportunities for you at more respect. Um, and the other thing I want to say is all our classrooms are technology-based. We use Google Classroom. I'm not sure if we use that here. Okay, I'm seeing some nods, yes. So that when you go down to your trade areas, you're still in connection with your academic teachers. You're still doing work, um, and you're being able to submit those things online. Okay, so we do have partnerships with a, a number of colleges for students to earn college credit, whether it's through UConn, um, any of our local community colleges, um, and some of our technical colleges. So depending on the trade you're in and the academic um, classes you choose, you can get some college credit that can transfer forward when you to most colleges. Uh, I, I feel like I've already said this, but certainly our students can and do go to college. These are just some examples of where our students have gone in the past, um, a very small example. Um, we have had some uh, college athletes as well, so if you're a big athlete and you're interested in playing, we have had students play at the uh, collegiate level too. Um, one of the things we're really impressed with and proud of at Norwich Tech is our huge group in our program. Um, you are a singer, you play an instrument, you like to paint, draw, sculpt, whatever it might be, you can absolutely continue that at Norwich Tech. Okay, so I'll just show you some pictures of our students um, in music. Our drum line not only performs in parades, but they perform at our home football games. Okay, so you'll see some students performing um, at a concert as well. Our art students also have art shows several times a year in conjunction with the music concerts, so it's really fun for our students to really showcase all their amazing talents. Of course, we, we have a lot of sports at our school. We are a smaller high school, so we have about 650 students total. So for those students that are really, that love to play a sport, or maybe that have never played a sport before and would love to come out for one, that is a possibility for you in your respect. Um, we have pretty much all the same offerings that you would have um, at East Lyme. We are in a different conference. We do play ECC school, um, but we are in a different conference. So we play mostly technical high school. Okay. Um, some other ones I want to highlight uh, football. We now play at home, so all our games are at Norwich Tech, where Triad Grasso students come to us, and St. Bernard students come to us to play on our team, okay, which is really, uh, we're really proud of that. One that's not listed up there, we also are part of a swimming co-op too, so if you're a swimmer, you can continue to swim with Norwich Tech. Uh, I think you get bust down to every point, so that is something that you can keep doing. But really, there's a vast variety. Cheerleading got added back this year, golf got added back, so um, as many programs are dwindling, ours is growing every year. About half of our students on campus play um, a sport. So these are just some examples for girls volleyball. It's a boys soccer, you do pro soccer too, too. Basketball, lacrosse, softball, baseball. Okay, so you know, our students, we, have, we do a lot of student athletes on our campus. All right, so how do you apply? So I've left a number of applications with your counselors. Um, please know that if you're interested in applying to more than one technical high school, you only need to use one application to apply to multiple, so you can apply to both Norwich and Grasso using one application. Um, they're blue, okay? There are, there are a couple of short answer questions that you have to answer. Really, we want to know what trades you might be interested in, what your plans are after you graduate high school. I know that might be kind of hard to think about now, but that's important if you're coming to a trade school. You're, a lot of why you're coming is for a trade, so you need to start thinking about what trades you might be interested in pursuing at Norwich Tech. Um, also, we're looking for your English and math grades. Again, you're cramming your academic life. You have to do all the same stuff regular high school students do, but we're cramming it into half the time, so we need to make sure that you're ready and prepared to do that. So we need to make sure that those grades are up to date. Okay, so we also look at your disciplinary record and attendance. We 
you're a state school, attendance is hugely important with us, uh, especially when you're in your trade areas. If you're not showing up to trade, you're either missing out on hours towards an apprenticeship, hours towards a licensure or certification. Um, so it's really important that we check your attendance as well. Okay. So what happens is you fill out the application, you get it into your counselors by, we'll say, December 1st. Okay. Make sure you're timely with that. Um, those come back up to us by the end of the by the end of the summer. What happens then is you get a letter in February saying you completed the first step of the process. If you are a student that has a 504 or an IEP plan, you have a meeting, and then all the students that are accepted are invited to spring freshman orientation in May. Um, we pull from about 40 different towns, so we have students from all over Eastern Connecticut. So it's a really fun night for students to get to meet other freshmen that might be coming, um, get a feel for what our building's all about, and see if you can really see yourself as a Norwich Tech student. Okay. Um, Norwich is pretty competitive. On an average year, normally we have about 500 applications. In the past several, we've had over 600 students apply. We can only take 200 students. So please make sure if you're even thinking about a technical high school, that you apply, and you apply on time. Um, and then if you decide, if you get in and you decide you don't want to go, that is okay. But it's always best to make your application ahead of time. Uh, we are really, really proud of our students at Norwich Tech. They are awesome. They are really talented, both academically and in their trade areas. These are just some samples of awesome things our students have done. Um, in 2016, our automotive students actually went to a national automotive competition in New York, and they won amongst all students across the country. Um, our students were named number one. Uh, we had National History Day state champs in 2016 as well, so our UConn ECE students um, that take history courses with us uh, they participated in a competition and they beat out all the, all the schools across Connecticut. Um, our students also had the opportunity to participate in something called Skills USA, um, which is both a, well, a state, national, and international competition. So students have the chance to compete at the state level, and if they do well in their trade areas, they get sent to nationals. We send students to nationals every single year. Um, in 2017, you'll see we had a first place in automotive and a second place in plumbing. Um, the student that was the second place in plumbing was only a junior at the time. He is now graduated and he is supposed to be going to compete in world skills next year, which is going to be in China. So really, really cool stuff that our students have the opportunity to do. Um, 2016, we also had the top electrical student in the country. So she went to the national competition for Skills USA and she won. She was the first ever female to win for electrical, so we're really, really proud of her. Um, she's actually right now at RPI studying aerospace engineering. So again, Skills USA, these are some of our marketing students that um, went to the national competition over the summer, and they, they did really well in the customer service area. You see some of our trophies there. Um, our students do have a lot of fun too. We have a, you know, we have a lot of different events at our school. We have a big 5K. We have a big car show every spring. Our students do have prom. Okay. We do spirit weeks, so we do you know, big pep rallies and things like that, just like you would at a normal high school. Um, the best advice I can give you for any school you might be thinking about is to go visit. So our open house is on November 14th from 5 to 7. It's a really fun night. You get a chance to meet um, all of our trade instructors, academic teachers, students, um, coaches, clubs. You can see what clubs we offer and things like that. Um, please, you know, come, bring your families, you know, tell your friends about it. We're really proud of our school and we'd love to be there that night. Um, if you would like more information, uh, you know, you go home tonight and say to your mom, dad, or whomever you live with, you know, I heard about Norwich Tech today and I think I might want to go there. We do the website, we're also on social media, uh, we're both on Facebook and Twitter, so please come check us out. Do we have time for questions? Yeah. Okay. Any questions from anybody?
Um, they, they earn the majority of their apprenticeship hours while they're in school. So they can go right out and become a plumbing apprentice right when they graduate.
Hometown High School. Um, we have Spirit Week, which were the pictures that you saw the video on the clips of the video of the kids in their pajamas because the first day of Spirit Week is pajama day, and it is on Monday coming up. Um, then we have what's the next one? Oh, Decades Day. So each class has a decade they dress up as. So that's what, when you saw the tie-dye t-shirts. That class had the 60s. Um, they had blue skirts and that would be the 50s. The teachers dress up too. Okay, the next day is Quads Day. We have double causes this year. I know that you are doing suicide prevention here at the middle school. We are piggybacking onto that. We also have uh, Austin's Army for a student who is battling cancer right now. So those will be our two causes. Then we have Color Day, which was when you saw all those kids dressed up in yellow, green, orange, and blue. Or, no, yellow, green, red, and blue. The orange was their cause day last year. And the last day is maroon and white. We have double pep rallies during Spirit Week, so there's a lot hopping at high school right now. Some of the other things that you saw were classes. We have some shop classes. We have computer automated drawing. We have furniture making. There's many computer classes, web design, there's programming, um, we have digital film, art classes, do you need to see those? If you saw the little children at the beginning, we have a kindergarten, we have a preschool, and a something that they have even before is free preschool, it's like birth to three, where children come in and kids get credit for working with them. So there's lots of things that you didn't see. So I'm going to pass this over, I have Dan Roberts with me who is in the two-time winning senior class. They've won Spirit Week two years in a row. We're wondering if they're going to get a three-peat this year. Um, and Grace Lawn, they are both student athletes. So please, please, please ask questions to Nurse Duncan. Do you have
So you can come in and those are like weighted more. So it's basically by level and you can get recommendations from your teachers on which class, which level you go into. Um, and then AP and honors contribute more to your GPA because they weigh more, which you don't have to worry about until you're like a senior. Um, and then I would say AP and honors classes are definitely more work and you'll worry about APs more when you're a junior. Um, but by then you're sort of more accustomed to it. Um, like right now, going from eighth grade to an AP class would be intimidating, but the first two years of high school really do work you up to those AP classes, um, and by then they don't seem that bad. Um, and you do, so everyone in the class is taking the exam so that you take it in May, and then you're done for an AP class, and then you're done with that class after May. But mostly that's juniors and seniors. Sometimes sophomores do that, uh, but freshmen normally don't. You can if it's like, and like to work, you get special permission. Um, but other than that, I would say that we, we, the levels of classes from E to honors, they do put you with, they, they, I feel like everyone's placed in a good level for them. Um, so you, you won't, if, if you're in the right level of the teachers, if you go with your teacher's recommendations, then you won't be pushed too hard and it won't be, like, they won't be giving you no work at all. Yeah. So let me just uh, jump in a minute. You will, not select classes until the program of studies comes out to the middle school, which will be in, I think, March. We're planning on doing that. And that, that way you'll have been through most of the grade. You'll know what classes you think. If you can look at the program of studies, it will have lots of guides as to what electives freshmen are available for. And it will also explain some of those classes like AP and Con Credit. Because we have students who graduate from East Lime High School with, if they get a five on their AP test, they, don't, they get credit for that class in college. They don't have to take that class. So if it's a prerequisite to something you need to do, you've already done it. Um, some of the UConn courses or the ECE courses, you also get credit for. And we've had students enter UConn and I know ECE for sure, and they're already a year done in college. So it's a real money-saving piece that would be important to you, that would be important to your parents. But that, you know, that's a, a way to do that. We also have career clusters where kids are getting credit for taking classes in certain areas. For instance, communications. Another one would be um, early childhood, childhood education. A third one is engineering. So we have lots of those classes at our high school. We have engineering um, that they build hydraulic arms. It's, it's pretty amazing to see what they do. They do a whole thing with testing cement, which is a different type of engineering. But the engineering teacher has been doing lots of different activities that would mimic different types of engineers. So it's pretty amazing. So that's how that works with that. So you won't pick classes until the spring. And everybody, whether you apply to the tech schools or not, you will still pick classes for East High School because you can change your mind. But what happens is that the freshmen 
like eating on the floor, um, which sounds like you wouldn't, like you, you, you said it sounds like you wouldn't watch me, but the freshmen have like their own sort of wing during lunch, and I, when I was a freshman, I really liked it, because you're not, you're not like being overloaded with upperclassmen, and it's fun, and when it's warm outside, you can eat outside, um, and it's sort of with all of your friends. So no, you don't have to eat on the floor. I know a lot of freshmen that choose to eat on the floor. When I was a freshman, I did, and like a lot of people still do. Um, Grace is a sophomore, so she's a little close to me. Um, yeah, like I sat on the floor all last year, and a lot of the freshmen class sat on the floor, and they're just like, it kind of is like a bonding experience. You're going through it together, and you all kind of just had your own area, and you could all talk to each other without just having to talk through tables, and your whole grade was getting together, and I thought it was fun. And then now this year, I eat a bunch of the same people that I ate with last year, but now I have a table, so, yeah. And there is, like, open, there definitely is open space where you can sit and have a table if you want to. I know freshmen this year that do have a table. Um, but I think if you ask any of the other classmen, they would say that they enjoy eating on the floor. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so if it's a fall sport, then you have to uh, sort of like get to know that ahead of time. So right before school starts, um, or the day of, a lot of times uh, fall sports will have try uh, tryouts. So you'll have like a week or three days before school um, where you're, you're practicing, but the coaches are counting as tryouts. And to, to do a fall sport, it's, kind of, it's important that you listen to the announcements in the school, and it's important that you look on like our website before school starts, because a lot of times the tryouts will be posted there. And then for winter and spring, it's a lot easier because um, it'll just be announced in your school, and you can sort of like sign up, or they'll say like anybody who's interested come to a lunch meeting on Thursday, and you can go there. And, uh, what sport are you? So that one's a little like. Looser. So you probably would just go to a lunch meeting and then if you're doing something like field hockey um, or football or soccer in the fall, that's when you would have to either like reach out to somebody that's in the grade above you or just check the website and go to the trials. Program of Studies, it will line it up. You can look on the website too. Everything is there under the high school, go to the high school handbook. Um, but you need four years of English, you need three years of math, three and a half years of social studies for next year. You will need a whole credit in health and a whole credit in PE, which is a little bit of a tweak from where we are. Um, three credits in science, two years of a world language which could include American Sign Language. I mean, we have our now at the high school, German, French, and Spanish, and Latin, okay? So obviously you haven't taken German or Latin before, but you may have been exposed to French and Spanish. So, right, and the counselors are gonna come in, you're gonna have those conversations, but it's 25 credits to graduate, and there's a lot of opportunities to take a lot of classes while you're there.
particularly picked this school to come to because I'm an East Line graduate. I went here with junior high with down there. So this is when I came here and I graduated East Line High School in Bobo Maybe Not. So it was it's enjoyment to be here to see you guys and all future. Uh, what we're going to touch base on is a little bit of trades and what they can do for you. Um, like I said, I graduated high school, went to college. I couldn't find a job in my field. So my uncle said, you want to join the Plumbers Union? And so you find a job? I said, sure. Fast forward, I own my own company. Um, and I teach at the school. Usually I say, what do you think I do at Grasso? And I usually get the principal, which I feel good. But no, I'm actually an instructor. So I clean up once every three months. Come down and do presentations. So we're going to touch base on a few things that uh, Barasso Tech has, electrical, culinary, and the different avenues that you can take with the trade school and those that like to work with their hands. Um, one thing else that's coming is the school next year for you to come to freshmen. It's a brand new facility. It's going to have up-to-date everything. The current school doesn't, but right now, next year, incoming freshmen will have a brand new school. When you pick your trade, you have a two-day cycle. Um, your academics are 92 days. You'll come in and you'll get to choose from your shops. You'll have electrical, like I said, plumbing, culinary, um, IST, BET, and then you get to check what you like. You go to every shop so you're able to find out what you want to do. After that, we have what we call four day. This is when you pick your top three shops or trades that you would like to do. Um, right now, I'm just finishing up with the last uh, group of my freshmen. And we're, the way we do it in our shop, we go very quick. My freshmen, by December, uh, no, let's say spring, they know how to pipe their own bathroom. They know what, they know what to do. Um, you solder, when you come into my shop the first day, you guys know what soldering is? Anybody? That's when you melt copper, you clean it up, and you melt metal, and you join it together. That's what you do the very first day when you come into my shop. So, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little PowerPoint presentation and then we'll answer any questions.
the PowerPoint. Okay, here um, with the PowerPoint, we have auto body, automotive, culinary, and ISP with computers. So generally, from the pictures you can see, it's hands-on. I like to say that I'm a hands-on teacher. I don't like to sit there and do this all day and talk. I like to have you guys working with your hands. That way I think you comprehend it more. So going through this, you'll have different um, shops that you can choose. And you can see all these pictures, you're continuously working. What does that do? It makes the day go by real quick and fun. Courses, 
uh, in the academic side. So at this point, we'll be offered three electives, electives, which is art, music, and computer applications. Pictures of the music department. And this is what Mr. Clark was talking about earlier. Uh, as a coming freshman, a lot of the time you have no idea. You're probably going to say, well, yeah, I want to be a hairdresser once I go up, once I graduate high school. Or I want to be a plumber, or I want to be a carpenter, or I want to be an out of mechanic. But you don't know until you told to all the different shops. So what we do is, we have three different phases. First phase, you're going to spend two days in each shop. And depending on how well you like the different trades that we offer, in the second phase, you should choose your top four or top three. You choose your top three. Now, the first phase is two days. The second phase, you, once you choose the top three, you're going to spend four days in that trade. And then at the end, the last phase is when you actually pick what trade you guys would like to do for the next four years. So, some more pictures of the different trades and things that they do. Uh, here's how I'm going. Bioscience. Uh, our bioscience department, uh, we have a, a partnership with uh, Mystic Aquarium, and a lot of our kids end up working at Mystic afterwards. They end up getting a hard time over there. But a lot of the, a lot of times when they leave the building, they go to Mystic and they work with the animals at Mystic Aquarium. We should have some pictures of that. Culinary. You guys would have known how good the food is. They make the an amazing, amazing lunch and an amazing food. And it's a really good price for teachers. There's the uh, electric department. Hairdressing. Here is our IST students. Uh, here's the computer drafting, and now we have that uh, machine, the uh, 4D printer. And as you guys saw in, the, in that previous video, that robot doing that fancy move. I believe that they're the ones who work with the, with the robot. Those that are interested in graphing, since we have a lead line with EV, a lot of you right out of high school get recruited by EV. Um, we do a lot with the uh, schools with electrical, uh, electrical because there's such a demand. Um, with the trades, you can see everybody knows supply and demand. You supply, you have enough demand, you need more. Right now in the trades, there's such a demand for plumbers and electricians because no one's taking the field. So what happens is to, if you become a plumber and there's a high demand, your wages go up. The average salary of a plumber in the state of Connecticut is 75000 So me and my company supply and demand, unfortunately, uh, you know the hurricanes that hit down south? What happened? The water flooded, so you see a lot of electrical contractors going down. Who follows behind them? Plumbers. I myself get calls and letters for me to come down to work at a higher premium. The trades right now is different from the 80s, but there's just not enough plumbers or trades people out there. So if, if you look in the paper and they are hiring three plumbers, which at one point I did, I had no replies. Then what you have to do is it's called like kind of incentive. We have sign-on bonuses. So if you wanted to work for me and you had your P2 license or even apprenticeships, even apprenticeships, I usually put out a thousand dollar sign-on bonus. That's the demand for the trades. So pretty much with the trades on my end, um, 
if we can't start filling the numbers. Anybody know Dirty Jobs? That guy who does Dirty Jobs? He has so much scholarship money that they cannot give it away. That means if you go to a trade school and say you don't want to do it, you can still go to college. There was a girl at Grasso Tech who finished the plumbing before, uh, finished the plumbing end of it. She designed, she started working on water filtration systems, which is very big. She ended up going to South America and got a, a, a scholarship to Grasso, uh, not Grasso Tech, Georgia Tech to finish her schooling, just based on her knowledge of plumbing. So there's a lot of different avenues if you want it. College is still there. I always say I have four boys, I have one at University of Maine. In the summertime, he works for me because he's gonna have his college degree, but plus I'm trying to get him to get his plumbing license too, because it's a licensed trade. Um, welding, welding is a big thing now with EV. So right now we're working on a welding shop where if you want to weld, do you, do you guys know what welders do over at the sub base? You weld pipes, you weld the steel, you weld, there's a demand for that. You're getting educational bonuses where they're actually starting to recruit. If you become a welder, I was in the union, um, you can travel. If you don't like to travel, uh, anybody know about the North Dakota pipeline? The gas line? People went out there and made a lot of money that was just based on welding. The salary, the supply, and demand is based on that. Okay, we do have sports. We have soccer, we have baseball, uh, cross country, basketball, and football. Football, you go to, we co op with uh, the North, North Tech. So, any of those that are interested in playing any of the fall sports, we do have a variety of sports that you guys can do. And talking about sports, uh, how are you guys doing in cross country yesterday? The boys. The boys, they you guys do well? And cross country, you guys win? You guys win? Yeah. All right. So, hey, we need some more athletes. We need some more athletes at, at Russell Tech, and we'll both really appreciate if you guys, are, you know, actually decide to come to our school. Uh, my daughter ran against you guys yesterday against the East Line girls. So, I think she got fifth. Did the girls, how, you, how did the girls do yesterday? Do we have any cross country runners here? Yeah. How do you guys think you guys win? No. no? Oh. Alright. Basketball players, do we have any basketball players here? I see the tall guy, I see some tall guys here. So hey, you guys wanna come to our school and play sports? You got the world? Yeah, I know you're a soccer player. Right? Yeah, you play soccer. No. No? Who's that your brother? I don't have I know I see you at indoors. At the indoor facility. Alright. So guys. I'm sorry? But for us? Of course we don't have the cross. But we do have tennis, and, and we do have baseball. I need some baseball players also. All right, guys, here we go. Here's our varsity team for soccer. Oh, we also have the volleyball team. And here's the co-op that we have with uh, Norris Tech and. When we started uh, St. Saint, Saint Joseph or St. Vernon? St. Vernon was also part of the co-op. We have a rifle team. And they happen to be one of the best in the state also. They, they're, pretty, they're really, really good. Here's our basketball, varsity basketball team. Track and field. Oh. Our, our goals teams, they, they go to practice uh, right at. Is that the one that. 
Okay, that's a little bit what the school looks like. We're running, we're running a little bit long. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. To go to Norris Tech? That's a very good question. The one thing I would say is that with our school being new, it's going to be updated. And it's based actually in the plumbing department over at Norris Tech. I really can't not knock it because the teacher over there is one of my former employees. So it's a choice. But I will say this. Depending on the trades that you pick, the schools do fill up quick. The number one schools people usually look at is Norwich Tech and Grasso Tech for the field because the one step up that we have is we have a new facility. It's going to be all brand new, which means they design totally different aspects. Is there a boys volleyball? No boys volleyball. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody else have that back? The school will be done in this July, so the next year school starting will be a brand new school. Is the football team good? They're undefeated right now in the conference. Football is very different. Football, you have the years where you're good and you're bad. When I went to East Lyme, they were pretty good, and then went bad, and then they became state champions. So it goes like this up and down. Is there some what? Spare week, yes. And there is, a, you know, I'm sure all the other tech schools, there is a dress code, so you wear, plumbing outfit, if you're plumbing, and then you wear your uh, the tech shirt, so there is the dress code. Uh, oh, 550. Anybody else? Any future plumbers? Oh, and I, I do got to say one thing. Everyone thinks it's a guy thing to do. This was the first class and I'm really excited. My class right now is 90% girls. 90% girls. So, if the thing is, what I, what I usually ask the question is when you think of plumbing in a nice way, what do you think of plumbing? Everyone automatically says the toilet and the stuff that's in there. No. There's a lot of things that you can do in the growing, who here in East Lyme has city water? Who has well water? Anybody know well water? Okay. So if you, anytime you look at any plumbing in your house or how the plumbing gets in there, that's how it gets there through plumbing. But right now, my class is, like I said, 90% girls, which is pretty good. Anybody else? Yes? Well water is the water that's in the ground, and you have a pump that pulls it up puts it into your house. So when people ask you that, if people ask you that question, oh, this one I'd like to say, does the toilet water and your drinking water come from the same place or is it separate? How many people think it's separate? We'll save that for class. Anybody else? Is that it? Well, thank you very much for allowing us to come. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Oh, we got time. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. We are very happy to be here with you this morning to talk to you a little bit about our school to see if this is a choice that you want to make for yourself. We're going to start with a video that kind of summarizes some of the programs that we offer and other information. So take a look.
students these days, you have a variety of choices. So way back in the day when I was in school, there was one choice, and for many of your teachers, there was one choice for secondary education, and that was the school in your district. Now things have changed considerably, so you are listening to a variety of presentations. And what you, what we're asking you to do is to listen carefully and to reflect to see whether or not this school, Science and Technology Magnet High School, is something that you would consider, is some place you would consider attending. So school nowadays is definitely a choice. STEM. Raise your hand if you know, if you know what that means, STEM. Yes? Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Very, very, very focused on those key areas. And these are some of the programming examples of our students in classrooms in those areas. Oops. <laughs> examples of our STEM programming. This is biomedical. our assistant director in town in charge of STEM programming, and she will give you more detailed information about each of the areas, and I'll speak to you in a few minutes after. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Texador. Good morning, and um, as Ms. Texador mentioned, I am involved with the STEM programming and our curriculum development, and and as Ms. Texador pointed out, our theme is STEM. And we, what that means is we integrate STEM into all of our content areas. So when you're in math class, you might hear about something that you're, you're learning about in science. Or in science class, you might be doing equations that you've learned how to take and manipulate in math. And we do this so you have a solid foundation of STEM, so you can be successful in your STEM electives. But within each of those four areas, we work really hard to provide programs that have that students come to us for because they are interested in it. In science, our most popular program, about a third of our students come to science and tech for, is our biomedical program. And this program is, is um, fabulous for anyone that has any interest in a career in the health field. Whether you want to become a doctor, or a dentist, or a nurse, or a veterinarian. It provides you with the foundation so that you can be successful. It is a four-year program where students take a different course each year. How many of you know what DNA is? Okay, so in the Biomed program, the students build on what they already know about DNA, and then through um, this program, we have a piece of technology called a thermocycler, and that machine makes copies of DNA. And the students learn how to make copies of DNA, first with simulated DNA, and then they take and make copies of their own DNA that they do genetic testing with. So students in the biomed program leave and go to college knowing how to use technology and have the skills that most students only ever read about in high school. Also in our science area, we have a fabulous environmental science program. Maybe um, healthcare isn't something of interest to you, but you love science, you love to be outdoors. Our environmental science program um, utilizes our partners with the Coast Guard Academy and Project O and NEST, and students go out to the Sound and on the Thames and work alongside real life professionals doing a variety of testing. We also have um, all of our basic science classes um, that allow you to take um, what's necessary for graduation. You also have the opportunity to take a college level chemistry class through Mitchell College at our school, and um, a physics class where you have the opportunity for college credit. Technology, 
Our most popular technology program is our 3D animation. How many of you have heard of Pixar Studios? So Pixar Studios uses a software called Lightwave. Our students in the 3D animation program learn how to use Lightwave to create animated features. In the video, you saw the computer screens with some of those figures they were rotating. They designed those using that software. We also offer digital video and video editing if you're interested in film production and a computer science and software engineering program if you want to learn how to do programming, developing apps. Also with technology, our students receive a Chromebook as a freshman that is theirs to use all four years. They have access to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week during the school year. Teachers are trained to use them instructionally, so you use them in class as well as many teachers have coursework online that you submit work, so it helps prepare you for what college is like. Engineering. Engineering is a huge deal. Many students start high school saying they want to be an engineer, but they have no idea what type of engineer they want to be. And there are thousands of different fields. Our engineering program um, strives to expose students to a variety of different engineering fields so you can kind of get a feel for what you're interested in and tailor the courses that you take. And last is math. Math is truly the foundation of all of our programs at Science and Tech because math is necessary in all STEM fields. Therefore, our math program is very broad. Some of you, math may not be your best subject. You may hate math. Our math program provides supports that help you be successful in math so you can be successful in your STEM electives. You might be sitting there though and math is your thing. You absolutely love it. Our math program has an opportunity that allows students to um, progress through a series of courses so that they end high school taking what's called Calculus BC, which is the first full year of college calculus that they get not only high school credit for, but also college credit through UConn. Part of our science and our biomed program is our sports medicine program, which allows students that have an interest in um, becoming an athletic trainer or a um, physical therapist or occupational therapist to be introduced to athletic training, introduced to how to treat sports injuries, and then as a senior, there's the opportunity to take a personal training certification course where at the end of the year, you take an exam, a national exam, and if you pass, you become a certified personal trainer. That you can leave high school, get a job as a personal trainer over the summer, or while you're going through college. An extension of our engineering program is an opportunity to earn um, an associate's degree while you're in high school in one of two areas of advanced manufacturing, and that's our Connecticut ECHO, or Early College Opportunity. We partner with Electric Boat and Three Rivers Community College, so students not only take high school classes, but they take college classes to, um, that they can take over a course of four, five, or six years. Not only get their high school diploma, they have an industry mentor, an opportunity for a paid summer internship after their junior year, and then an opportunity to earn that associate's degree. We are looking at adding um, a possibility of a certificate program with this um, manufacturing as well. Some of you might like to explore other cultures or visit other countries. We have a fabulous international program that would be perfect for you if you like that. There's a couple different opportunities. Um, the first is our Italian exchange. Um, each fall, we have a sister school in Monte Catini, Italy, 
which is in Tuscany, and they send 15 to 20 of their students to our school. They stay with our students, they come to school for two weeks, they go on field trips, and they get to experience what life as American teenager is like. In April, our students that hosted travel to Italy and stay with the students they hosted and go to school in Italy and visit um, a variety of different sites. And um, our Italian students are in the country right now. They arrived in Boston and they arrived at our school on Friday. So it's very exciting. The other is um, a, a Chinese program. This last summer we had a group of students from China that were here for a month taking classes at our school and at Mitchell College. Clubs. We encourage all of our students to participate in at least two after school activities each year. Those can be extracurricular activities, um, they can be academic related. We have numerous clubs that are available. Many of them, most of them, are student driven. And what I mean by that, if we, if we don't have a club that you would like to have, you just need five or six of your friends, a faculty member that would be an advisor, and your club is started. Um, our clubs range from a biomedical HOSA club, our, we have a FIRST robotics team that um, two years ago traveled to the World Championship and, and um, earned the number two ranking in the world, um, and then a variety of other clubs. We also have all of the traditional sports, and as a science and tech student, you are a New London Whaler. So all of the sports at New London High School are open to you, from football to basketball to fencing to wrestling to soccer and um, all of the traditional sports. We have a variety of partnerships, and I've mentioned some of them as I was talking, various community um, organizations. We truly believe our school is not contained within the four walls of our building. Our school is truly Southeastern Connecticut, and our partners allow us opportunities to bring students out into the community to enrich their um, academic Coursework. One of those is um, with Mitchell College. We have an early college model that allows students in one of three areas to take and choose from a variety of courses that starts with a summer intro to college writing after their sophomore year at Mitchell College. A day in the life of a science and tech student. Our day starts at 7.30. Um, you arrive somewhere between 7 and 7.15. There is a hot or cold free breakfast that is waiting for you if you choose. Um, you have seven classes each year, but we run on a six period rotating schedule. So each day you drop one class and you see the other six. Um, each of the classes are 60 minutes long. Lunch is also free. And the picture up there on the screen is a real picture of our lunch. We have um, real chefs in our cafeterias in New London. And they cook everything fresh. There is nothing processed and it is incredible. And then at the end of the day, um, we have an after school program that runs till five o'clock. And um, um, there is opportunity for transportation home. Ms. Texter? Thank you, Ms. Clark Barnes. So Mrs. Parker has done, I think, a really wonderful job explaining explaining the elements of our program. So if, as I explained at the beginning, you have choices. So in this is 
a school that you would like to consider, do know that we follow up with guided tours that take place, they start probably in about a week or so, that take place at our building that gives you an opportunity to not only meet staff, but see the various areas in which our courses take place. So it really is a question about application process. It means going online into Schoolnet and putting your application and information in, as well as participating in our tour so that you can see firsthand if this is a place for you. And note please the dates. Um, this poster will be given to your guidance counselor, so the guidance counselor as well as other information regarding our application process will be given to your guidance counselor and you can see her for that information. Say two. I want to thank you for your time and attention. You know, we have a
Any other questions? Okay, well again, thank you for your time and attention. You have been a wonderful morning.
And then when you graduate, if you want to keep your laptop, it's, it's given to you at a very discounted price if you want to stay with, with it. But it's your laptop all four years. So, two of our most famous rooms in our school. On the top here is our aquaculture lab. That's where a lot of the fish classes take place. You don't have to take a ton of aquaculture classes or a ton of, as they call fish classes, if you don't want to, but we do make you take a few. One, two, three times before you graduate. But this is the room that all of the scientific magic happens. On the bottom here, it's called our simulator lab. This is where we're actually lucky enough for the Coast Guard Academy to be writing our curriculum for our Marine Studies 1 and 2 classes. They are coming in and actually teaching students with our teachers what they are doing in real life. So when you're in this room and you're working on these simulators, you're doing exactly what the Coast Guard is doing. It's fantastic. All right, so after all the hard work that you guys do at our school, we've won a lot of awards. It's not really the teachers, it really is the students and, and the effort that you guys put forth. So we won gold medal, best high schools, this past year. And it's, it, among other awards, this is just one of the main pieces why your direct effort creates that ability. Pass the tour. So let me tell you a little bit about what a gold medal school is. So what they do, this news roll and report, they, they rank the schools, all of the schools in the entire country, thousands and thousands of schools across the entire country, and they give the top 500 schools a gold medal. So our school, I think it was 334 maybe in the entire country, and we are sixth in the state of Connecticut. Those top four schools on that list are all what are called merit-based schools. So that means that you have to have really good grades in order to even get into those schools. Our school ranks sixth overall. We're the second public school on there that it's just a 100% lottery. It doesn't matter what your grades were to get into our school. 100% lottery. So we took those top schools and put them on a map of Connecticut. And you can see East Lyme a little bit to the left of us down there at number six. We're the only school in southeastern Connecticut that earned a gold medal this year. So pretty cool. Um, none of the other schools in this area, we draw from that entire corner, none of the other schools earned a gold medal this year. We have a lot of um, higher level courses being offered at our school as well. So we have AE and ECE courses. And ECE is early college experience. They're UConn level courses. And you can start taking UConn classes at our school in your sophomore year. That means you are a college student as a sophomore at our school. It's pretty cool. Um, we have 271 students at our school and 150 of them right now. So over half of the students at our school we consider college students because they're taking an ECE or AP course. That's about 94% of our seniors and about 86% of our seniors and juniors. So you can begin taking college level courses at an earlier age. What's great about that is in the long run, it ends up saving you and your family a lot of money. Those college level courses transfer to most schools as college credit. We have a student this year um, who transferred about 44 credits into her college. So she's actually a, a second semester sophomore. She already has a year and a half of college done. She finished it in high school, saving her family about $60,000. So pretty cool. She's saving money, getting a lot of coursework done in high school. So no matter what high school you go to, you are going to have to take something called the SAT. It's a standardized test in the state of Connecticut that Connecticut mandates you take. So no matter where you go, you're going to take this test. This past year, our juniors scored number one overall on the ELA or English section of the SAT. So once again, we took those top schools and put them on a map. Again, only school in southeastern Connecticut that even ranks in the top 10. So our school, our students are doing really, really well academically. And that's leading for them to get into some of these amazing colleges, top 25 universities and colleges across the country. Our school's in the news a lot. And one of the coolest things that we were in the news for is something called the fish bill. So a couple of years ago, it was actually illegal to sell the fish that schools were growing. So we created this new bill that allows the fish that we grow in our aquaculture facility to be sold at the local markets. So if you've ever bought seafood or fish from any of the local markets, it might have been the fish that we've grown in our school. So that's pretty cool. We have strong partnerships with the Mystic Aquarium, and one of the coolest things that we did with the Mystic Aquarium this year is we earned a grant, a $25,000 grant from SeaWorld, and this is allowing us to grow ornamental fish in our labs. 
So what's happening right now is that people who have aquariums and when you buy those little like Nemo fish or like bright colored fish from actual pet stores, they're taking those fish out of the ocean and it's ruining the ecosystem, it's ruining all the coral reefs and it's really killing our ecosystem of the, the water. So what this grant is allowing us to do is actually breed those fish and grow those fish in our facility so that it doesn't ruin the ecosystem. So pretty cool, we just started doing that. It's a brand new project. Uh, our teachers and students are working on that right now. We have strong partnerships with NEST, New England Science and Sailing, as well as Project O. So in your freshman year at our school, four times in the fall and then four times in the spring, you actually go out on the Project O boat. So you miss all your classes that day and you go out on the Project O boat with your teacher and you learn about things out on the water. In your sophomore year, you earn your safe boaters license. So some of you might already have your safe boaters license. That's okay, you'll just go through some of the course where it'll be an easy class for you, hopefully. If you don't have your state voter's license, you will earn it. It's the same test that adults take too. So we're gonna help you to pass that test so that you are able to legally drive boats. Then we use the New England Science and Sailing boats. You actually go to Stonington and you get these small groups and you go out on the water with small groups of students and instructor. You don't have a teacher with you, it's just a NASA instructor, and you guys actually get to drive the boats around. You go through Mystic Harbor, Stonington Harbor, all the way up to Mason's Island. So it's an actual hands-on learning experience and you are in charge of getting that boat safely to and from the dock. We have a strong partnership with the Coast Guard Academy as well. Uh, we have a student from each of our graduating classes at the Coast Guard Academy. And just recently, our first graduating student graduated from the Coast Guard Academy. She's serving in Hawaii right now. So pretty cool, it's an elite academy, um, and every year we've had a student get into this elite academy. These are some of the schools that our students are getting into across the country. Some of the top colleges and universities are up there. Places like Yale, Brown, Duke, University of Miami, some of the top colleges across the country, and our students are very easily getting into these schools. So similar to some of the other presentations that you've heard, we have a lot of clubs at our school, but the neat thing about our school is that if you don't see a club up there that you're interested in, you can create your own club. So this happened with a couple of different clubs here. You just have to get five friends that want to do that with you and a teacher advisor, and you get to create your own club. So we'd like to um, try to get a bunch of different things on there. If you look at that list, there's a ton of different things, but if you can't find something for you, you can create your own. This is one of our students, his name is Ajaya Brown. He's from Groton, Connecticut, and I like to use him as, a, he's like a perfect example of being able to balance school and after, after school or extracurricular activities. He is a varsity basketball player for Finch High School. Um, he also runs track and does cross country, and you guys would be allowed to play sports for your sending school. So you would still be an Eastline Viking, you would still be able to play sports for Eastline High School. We do have a lot of students right now that do that. So whatever sports are available at Eastline High School, you would be able to participate in as a student at our school. Um, as we discussed that earlier, our school gets out at 143, which is plenty of time for you to get back to your high school to be able to make it to games and practices and all of those things. So sports is not an issue in this district. You guys can go back and play for your sending school. So we're called the Marine Science Magnet High School, but actually only about 7 to 8% of our students go into the field of marine science when they graduate. Really, really small number. So you don't have to love fish to want to come to our school. We'll prepare you for anything. So we have a lot of students that go into things like the medical field, business, uh, law, political science, education, English, journalism. We have kids doing a ton of different things, not just marine science. So no matter what you're interested in, we will prepare you for that. So here's how you apply. It's really easy, there's two ways. You can get a paper application, which we'll leave with your school counselor, so you can do that with your school counselor and they'll send it to us. Or you can apply online at our school website. If you apply online, you will get a confirmation email saying that your, your application has been submitted and you're all set. So we suggest applying online so that you have that confirmation email, but you can do it on paper as well. Really, really easy application name, address, and your phone number. Please make sure it's a working phone number so when we call you if you've been accepted, it works. That's it, you don't ask anything else. So we like saying coming to our school is like pressing the reset button. 
doesn't matter what your grades were before. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how much money your family makes. It doesn't matter what your attendance record was. None of that matters anymore. It's a 100% lottery. All your names go into like a giant hat. We pull out 70 to 80 days, depending on how many spots we have available that year. You'll get a phone call from our principal in about February if you get in. Uh, but students have gotten accepted all the way through September. So some, sometimes people decide to leave or change their mind. So we always say, apply no matter what. Even if you're just thinking about coming to our school, even just a little bit, it doesn't hurt to apply. It is not binding. If you get a call from our principal in February and you think, I decided I really want to go to East Lime High School, I'm going to go there instead, no problem. You can say no. No problem. But if you don't apply and then decide you really want to go to our school, you can't get in if you don't apply. So please, if you're even interested in it at all, please, please, please apply. And that's our website up there. We also have some open house dates, um, Wednesday, November 14th, and then Wednesday, December 5th, both at 6.30. You can bring your families, come check out our school, get to talk to some of the students. You'll go, you'll have a presentation from our principal, who's awesome, and you'll get to go on a student-led tour of our school. So check out our facility and get to talk to some of the kids that actually attend our school. It's me again. Hello. So, we are nearing the end of our presentation. It wouldn't be right unless we showed you our famous lip dub. So all the hard work that you guys do every day, all the while we're having so much fun, we're laughing together, joking, dancing. This showcases that in a small video, so please enjoy.
Express. Right here. Can you graduate from the You need 25 credits to graduate. If you get them, it's, it's actually not usually a special scenario possible. It's not an unusual thing, though. Yes. 100% get accepted to four year and two year colleges. Last year, 99% actually went. So 100% acceptance. Yes, over here. You can come back here and play volleyball. We have fencing and crew for our sports, but every other sport can come back here to play. Yes. School starts at 7.30 and there is a bus that brings you there. Yes. Average SAT score. High 500s. We had a lot of 1300s for our last year junior combined. 500 and more section. Total. Yes. We do. We have about three per year. We're, we take spirit very seriously. Sharp we call it. Alright, in the back. the line, but we're, we are a project a lot, so technically yes. Right now. Lunch there is about 20, 25 minutes. The SBAC. We are calling it NGSS now, so a similar test. Not the same. Alright. Thank you guys so much. If you want to We don't have a specific engineering program, we have a lot of science, so AP Computer Science, we have a lot of physics, AP Physics, we have a lot of classes that you can take if you want to be an engineer. There's about 10 seniors that I have right now that are looking to do engineering programs. No, it's not.